A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, and Y, and Z. Now you know your ABCs, won't you watch this video? Greetings one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I am starting yet another monthly feature here on my channel today. Uh, yes, will I have time for any other videos but monthly features? Uh, well, yes, probably. Uh, yes, I wouldn't have taken on these two new monthly features if they were not low prep, basic concepts. Uh, as with the playlist, this one is also a very basic concept. I call this one Tom's A to Z because I can't think of another uh, title yet. If you can think of one better, let me know. I got the idea for this concept when I was over at House of Records the other day looking at their uh, dollar LP section, which is down on the on the bottom uh, near the floor in one long lane, as you can see in the video I'm showing you. Uh, they are separated, of course, by letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, and so on. And I just came up with the idea right then and there, uh, hmm, wouldn't it be fun to just buy one album from each letter of the alphabet for a dollar a piece, bring them home, listen to them, and just tell my viewers what I thought of them? just for the heck of it, just for fun. And so the concept was born. Yes, the basic idea for this is every month or in every video, I will be talking about uh, two albums, one each from two letters of the alphabet. For instance, in today's video, I'll be talking about an artist whose uh, name begins with A and an artist whose, whose name begins with B. And in the next one, it'll be an artist whose name begins with C and then D and so forth. Uh, I plan to cycle through the entire alphabet in a 12-month period. Uh, and yes, this is already February, so I will be doing another of these before the end of the month. Uh, that's what I'm planning on anyway. Uh, so yes, I may be leaving out letters uh, periodically or possibly doubling up, you know, doing three letters a month instead of two, just so that I can get to Z by the end of, De of December. So, but yeah, just a fun basic concept just for the heck of it. And so let's just delve right on to, into it here. Uh, today's A artist is Morris Albert. And this is, this is his album, Feelings. And this was done in 1975. Uh, he was, I actually, I knew about this song just because of its uh, heavy cheese factor, at least from, you know, my generation and slightly uh, younger than that. Uh, a lot of you people might not have even heard of the song. It's called Feelings, the title track. Uh, it was kitschy for a couple of reasons I won't go into because they would bore you. But uh, yeah, I actually did not realize that he is the artist who originally recorded the song. I assumed it was somebody really kitschy like Debbie Boone or Marie Osmond or somebody like that. But uh, no, it was, it was Morris Albert. And uh, yes, that song, of course, is on here. That's the title track. Duh. And But yeah, the, uh, the rest of the album is basically uh, AM radio pop, typical of the mid-70s, you know, kind of soft rock pop sort of stuff. And uh, Morris Albert, I, I looked him up on the uh, on Wikipedia, and something uh, else kind of fun about doing these is I can learn more about artists I might not have ever heard of otherwise. Uh, yes, Morris Albert was born in Brazil to an Austrian immigrant family. Very interesting there. And yes, this album actually uh, reached number 37 on the Billboard charts. Uh, the single Feelings was actually a top 10 hit in the U.S. in the summer of 75. And that was his one hit. He was a one-hit wonder, basically. Uh, he put out... Actually, he's put out several albums. I'm not sure. I think his sophomore album charted also, but not as high as this one. And then he just kind of faded toward obscurity. I believe he lives in Italy now with his family, so he may be an international star, but uh, here in the States, he's kind of been forgotten to the winds of history, I guess you'd say. But um, yeah, this is not a bad album at all. Uh, so, you know, just as I said, very AM radio pop, you know, think about uh, bread or air supply maybe, you know, just kind of that, that soft rock kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, and, uh, although actually there are a couple of songs, uh, one of the songs on side B, Ways of Fire and Bumbamaku, I think is how you pronounce it, that had a Latin feel to it. It actually reminded me a lot of Santana. So yeah, I mean, this this album was full of a few surprises. I'll, I'll give it that. So, but yeah, it was it was a fun little album. Was it, was it worth a dollar? Heck yeah. In my opinion, <clears throat> it would have to be truly profound crap for it not to be worth one dollar. I mean, honestly. So yeah, I'm going to have fun with this feature, just browsing the uh, artists I've never heard of or albums I've never heard. Uh, speaking of artists I've never heard of, but probably really should have, Rocky Burnett, he is the B artist in uh, today's video. And uh, The Son of Rock and Roll is the name of this album. And at first I thought this was just total cheese. Uh, sorry about the light glare. But yeah, I mean, the cover looks a little bit cheesy, but honestly, you know, for 1980 was when this album was released. 
you know, it can be forgiven. You know, cheese doesn't translate well over the years. But uh, I didn't realize until I did some research on Wikipedia that the title is actually very appropriate. Rocky Burnett uh, was born into a musical family. He is the son of Johnny Burnett, who, with his, his brother Dorsey, formed a rockabilly band called the Rock and Roll Trio in the 1950s. So yeah, uh, and they had a, a few, a handful of uh, reasonable hits out there. So, so Rocky Burnett truly is the son of rock and roll, which I had, I had no idea. See, I'm learning new things about music doing this feature, so I already enjoy it. But yeah, this was actually a pretty darn enjoyable album. I think I liked it a little bit more than Morris Albert. Uh, yeah, the uh, the one uh, single that he had, and again, uh, Rocky Burnett is another guy who was basically a one-hit wonder, tired of toe in the line. Was it was a breakup song, which was uh, pretty popular. That one reached uh, number eight on the pop charts, actually, and this album peaked at number fifty-three on the charts. So it it did not do as well as Morris Albert, uh, compared to, comparatively speaking. But this album has a lot of really cool songs. Um, I, I believe Rocky Burnett has become, or, or maybe that was his uh, his dad and his uncle. I can't remember. But uh, songwriters, the family was a, a songwriting family. Yeah, I think it was actually his uh, dad and, and uncle wrote hits for uh, Ricky Nelson and some other ones. So yeah, singing and songwriting is in his blood, obviously. But one of the, by far, that one of the catchiest singles I've heard since this time last year, and just in general, in the music that I listen to in general, is Baby Tonight. If you can find Baby Tonight by Rocky Burnett, give it a listen. The hook will stay in your head for hours. That was a great song. And uh, another one on here is called The Boogie Man. Boogie as in, give you my very pathetic display of my dancing just now. Uh, sorry, <laughs> nobody deserves to see that. But uh, yeah, and Clowns from Outer Space is another song on this album. So this one was fun. I tell you, it was, as I said, a little more fun than Morris Albert. I really enjoy this one. Um, and the album is actually dedicated to pretty much his entire family. Um, his dad, Johnny, died in 1964 in a boating accident, I believe. And his uncle, Dorsey, who was also a founder of the Rock and Roll Trio, died in 1979, just the year before this album was uh, put out. And his, uh, I'm guessing by the, her birth and death dates, was his grandmother, uh, Willie Mae Mama Burnett. Uh, this album was also, also dedicated to her. And also to Carol Lee Trent, who I'm not sure who that was in, a, in relation to uh, Rocky Burnett. So... Uh, yeah, a whopping four people that this album was dedicated to uh, in memory of. So, yeah, a fun album, I gotta say. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this inaugural edition of Tom's A to Z. Uh, this, yeah, this year it'll be albums that I get from the uh, dollar bin at uh, uh, the dollar record bin at House of Records. Um, next year it might, I might evolve it to a different concept, but it'll still be the A to Z formula. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where this uh, feature goes. Uh, I certainly had fun with this month, and I actually have yet to buy the C and D albums uh, for the next installment, so we'll see what comes of that. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.